Welcome to Fridays with Coco. I know most of you know that earlier this year, the mice and I traveled to a few countries in Europe. And when we were in Leipzig, Germany, we were in a church that had a little gift shop with these, what I call grab bags. So for 15 euros, you could select any bag and it would be any number of things in it. And I decided not to open it then, but waited until just last week, which is like two months later. And one of the things in here is a little figure of Martin Luther. And we'll set that down there. We kind of put him together and here he is. I'm going to just let you see him up a little bit closer and he's writing those theses. Now, in, if you wanna know a little bit more about Martin Luther, last week's video featured Wittenberg, Germany, where he lived. We were just so attracted because we do have this thing about bees. This week, through the ecumenical prayer cycle, we will be praying for people who live in Ghana and Nigeria, right around this part of Coco's beach ball globe. By praying for these people this week and people in other countries through the other weeks of the year, we will pray for all of God's children in the world in one year. Let's begin with this. And I like this airline ticket the name of the passenger is Coco, and the assigned seat is Anywhere She Wants. A reading of Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. Let God's Spirit show you how to live in a good way. Then you will not choose to do wrong things, for humans tend to be weak in making their own choices. Some of these choices include jealousy, anger, or hurting others for the purpose of feeling self-important. Such choices are opposite to the things God's Spirit wants. God's Spirit will lead you to do only things that are good in the sight of God. Then you will inherit the kingdom of God. Live by the fruit of the Spirit, that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are good things. When we live by these, we belong to Christ Jesus, the one who already took all the bad things to the cross. If we live by the Spirit, we will also be guided by the Spirit. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here. We have heard and we will tell the story. Coco has written a poem for you and she chose a picture of an organ that you're gonna hear about a little bit later. The title of Coco's poem is, Speaking of Optimism, it is often said that we now live in what's called the age of information, a time when fountains of knowledge seemingly provide instant gratification. Speaking of fountains, there's the ever famous one called the Trevi in Rome. There is also a writing pen known as a fountain, possibly found in your home. Speaking of writing pens, compared to quills, they really are magnificent longer lasting than those tail feathers from birds, using as a scribing implement. Speaking of feathers, not all are created equal, one might suppose. Sturdy are the ones from geese, sturdier from swans, the sturdiest from crows. Speaking of sturdy, it is true that a quill point gets dull from too much demand. But did you know that the point can be hardened by sticking it in hot sand? Speaking of hot sand, this is often found in places that don't get a lot of rain. This may be why quill pens first appeared 2,000 years ago in Seville, Spain. Speaking of things appearing, let me help you get rid of an almost certain fret. Feather harvesting is not scary for birds, for birds shed them, and then the humans get. Speaking of shedding, quills eventually, like fountain pens, could not compete, along with beautiful cursive writing that many say has now become obsolete. Speaking of obsolete, fountain pens are no longer the preference of all, 
for they were taken over by the ball point and now the trusty roller ball. Speaking of things that are trusty, one creature has optimism so fine. Where there's a quill, there's a way, says the spiny porcupine. What a fabulous poem. I'd love to know how long it takes her to come up with some of these things and where she gets all that information. There's all kinds of stuff in there that I feel like I often hear for the very first time. Today is the first, can't be the first, it's the third already? Well, it's the third in a series of eight videos in which we're thinking about the whole idea of traveling. The mice and I spent some time this past summer in several European countries, and we discovered a lot of things about people, especially those with whom we could not easily communicate without sharing the same first language. Today we feature Arnstadt, Germany, a place that is the birthplace of a famous piece of music. All of Coco's guests will share something that relates to Arnstadt, but also something about how one thing leads to another as long as we're willing to just show up. Let's begin with, give you a quick little look at that. By the way, number one, my name is Fred. When Coco invited me to come today to speak with all of you, I realized she remembered my telling her how I visited Arnstadt a couple of years ago, just as the pandemic was beginning to loosen up. Even so, I still wore a mask every time I was around other people. I rode a lot of trains to get there and remember sometimes feeling a bit hemmed in, but I also remember what a treat it was to ride through the countryside and into villages and cities on the always efficient and punctual trains. When I heard Rev. David read the Galatians lesson, I couldn't help but think how this whole idea of living under the guidance of the Holy Spirit is a lot like being on the rails, particularly in Europe, because you can get almost anywhere by train. But there's something else I think about every time I ride the rails. It has to do with the intricate switching system that's required for guiding a train into a station on just the right track. From a drone's eye view, it can look as though two trains might be heading right for each other, but then one will veer off onto another track. And it's not by the choice of the driver. The rails make the choice. If you ask me, I wouldn't want to be the one to have to deal with the operation of such a system. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit guiding me, I'm all in. I don't have to do anything other than to just be me and show up. Off to a good start. I like this next one, if only for the reason that it's green given my great love of all things green and many things not green. By the way, number two, my name is Johanna and I've never been to Arnstadt, but I have a close friend who lives there and works for a company that manufactures computer circuit boards. Would you believe that Arnstadt has only 27,000 inhabitants but has over 130 manufacturing companies listed on the Dun and Bradstreet report? I find that quite amazing and have always been impressed by the German educational system that highly values all kinds of learning, both universities and trade schools. My cousin went to a technical college and now loves her job, which is very hands-on in the latest technologies. She tells me a lot of things I don't completely understand, but I am quite impressed how a circuit board with hundreds of interconnected components all work together so efficiently. When Fred was speaking about the 
intricate network of railway tracks that relies on a complex and accurate switching system, I knew he and I would have to have a talk because that's just what my cousin's company specializes in. And not just for the German train system, but for other countries as well. I don't think it's too much of a stretch or a leap to think about how these circuit boards made with human hands save numerous lives every day because they were invented for the purpose of increased safety. As the Galatians reading tells us, let God's Spirit show you how to do good things. And we all know safety is a good thing and a very important thing in our modern world. Green. Well, you heard it here. Oh, maybe you can see Martin Luther a little bit more. Okay, some of you will know right away what this is, and maybe some of you have such a thing. By the way, number three, my name is Elton, and I work in the auto industry, specializing in the development of electric vehicles. Arnstadt really is a unique place. It dates back to the year 704, but is poised on the cutting edge of the world's most modern technologies. Arnstadt is well known in the electric vehicle industry because of a company there that makes batteries for those vehicles. Unlike conventional batteries, EVs use lithium ones, which use a mineral that is more prevalent and costs less to employ its usage. In this day and age of ever increasing costs for so many things, the cost for an EV lithium battery has dropped 80% over the past 12 years. As a person of faith, I believe God has guided us in using our minds and knowledge for the purpose of doing good. As the Galatians reading tells us, let God's Spirit show you how to live in a good way. All we have to do is be there to show up, like at school, where we learn and train for whatever job we choose. And I've learned that whenever I make a good decision, it always leads to the next good decision. And pretty soon, my life is filled with good, the kind of good that is like the fruit of the Spirit. It's filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and even self-control, although that's a little hard for me once in a while. These are good things to live by. And here we are at that place called, how can we be it? By the way, number four already, and yet we are. I'd like you to take a look at this one and not focus so much at the buildings or the sky, but what is in the foreground. By the way, number four, my name is Mary Ellen, and I'm someone who has a great interest in the ways we use our natural resources, and I think water is definitely at the top of my list. Whenever I've traveled in Europe, I've always loved seeing the many water fountains in various squares throughout a town or city. The fountains are beautiful and very peaceful, but if one studies the origin of these fountains, they really weren't for the sake of beauty. Instead, they were places where people used to have to go to get water because they didn't have running water in their homes. I remember visiting Arnstadt and how there's a hill right in the center of the town, which means gravity is used to deliver water from a central well to various other fountains on the lower elevations. So my question is, did the first settlers find this location in which to live, or did they look for a place 
with a hill because water is so vital to sustaining life and they knew it could travel to more places in their newly formed town. Perhaps another question is, do we make choices in our lives and then realize we need God's help? Or does God create us where God needs us to be and then provide us with what we need to sustain life? I think the Galatians reading tells us the answer, that through the Holy Spirit, we will be given all the things that are good. And this one, this one might be the hardest to really identify, but it's got a really cool story behind it. By the way, number five, my name is Charlie, and I'd like to talk about something I just thought of last night when I arrived here at Coco's house. I knew we were going to be discussing St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, but I wasn't expecting to have a revelation or epiphany. It has to do with the time I visited the quiet town of Arnstadt. In towns where tourists aren't crowding the streets, I love to walk slowly and look at details of architecture or flower gardens. In Arnstadt, I came upon a house with perhaps the most unique and symbolic door handle I have ever seen. The door handle itself was of a hand grabbing the door handle from the other side. Thinking back on it, it now helps me understand what it means to allow God to open the doors of my life, to literally open them for me. I don't need to do the work. And I couldn't possibly always know exactly what it is I am to do next in life. But God does. These are the kind of doors that assure me I just need to show up and be there. The first line of our scripture passage was, let God's spirit show you how to live in a good way. Thank you one and all, and thank you for being quiet. I get home pretty late on Thursdays and I don't even know what time they arrive or make their plans. I just know they don't tell me very much until Friday morning. And then I'm expected to stand here and open my mouth and occasionally say something that is coherent. Coco taught us in her poem about how a single word can trigger a thought in a completely new direction. One of those sequitur, non sequitur things. This often happens when we're having a conversation if the other person is not focused or giving undivided attention. Instead of being able to finish our story, the conversation shifts to the other person and their need to share something completely different from where we would be going in our story, all because of a word we use. I believe God does this when we're praying. While we're having a conversation with God, God sends the Holy Spirit to nudge us, to help us move in a new direction when the time is just right. This is a part of God's grace, something we can't predict, something we don't earn, something we may not even feel we deserve, but is something we need to pay attention to. And the best way to pay attention is just show up. The mice and I went to Arnstadt, Germany. It was in June, and because it's one of those places where J.S. Bach lived, I wanted to spend at least a day there and to go to a Sunday service in the church where he was the music director. 
It was there that he composed what has become, I guess, the most famous organ piece ever written, the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. When I arrived in Arnstadt on a Friday afternoon, I learned that the four main churches in the town have a rotating schedule of worship services, each church used once monthly. And Bach's church was not going to be the one used that Sunday. I saw a poster in the town square advertising a concert by one of the choirs I had heard at the Bach Festival in Leipzig. It was scheduled for Saturday at noon, but again, not at the Bach Church. Of course, I decided I would attend anyway. After the event, I asked the host organist who serves all of these four churches in the rotation if there would be any opportunity to hear the organ in the so-called Bach Church. With a twinkle in his eye, he said, you're in luck. I agreed to play a private recital this afternoon at four o'clock for the choir that you just heard sing. I invite you to come as my personal guest. I'll never forget that experience, partially because I got to hear the famous Toccata and Fugue played on the instrument where Bach had composed it. But perhaps more importantly, there was no way I could have orchestrated attending the private concert. I simply wouldn't have even known about it. But all I had to do was be there. All I had to do was show up, first at the choir concert, and then stand in front of the music director organist, and then learn that day that I would hear the Bach church organ. The Holy Spirit had already done the work of orchestrating and positioning everybody in this entire scenario. All I had to do was show up. What could be simpler? By the way, number six, when I take these trips, I do a lot of planning and I always try to decide where I want to be each and every Sunday morning because there's usually a church that I haven't been in or an instrument that I haven't heard before. And I knew I wanted to go to Arnstadt. There are other towns, there's Eisenach and Lübeck, there are other towns where Bach live, but I just felt compelled to go to Arnstadt in this particular trip. There are no trains to get there on a Saturday. So the only way I could get there was on Friday. And there would be no trains leaving there on Sunday after the church service. So I would have to wait until Monday. I had to spend parts of four days and three full nights just to be there for that one service. But here's what happened. If I had been able to get there on Saturday, I would have probably arrived in town at four or five o'clock in the afternoon to be ready for Sunday morning. Instead, because of these trains only going on certain days, because of the particular weekend that I could go in my own schedule, I went on Friday and because of being there, that whole opportunity to hear the concert, to talk with the organist and to be invited to that private recital took place. Show up, that's all I have to do. I believe the Holy Spirit had been orchestrating and helping me plan that trip's itinerary so many months before knowing what a delight it would be. For this series of videos, we're going to try to use music by a composer from whatever country we're in. And so for Germany, we have chosen Johann Kuhnau, K-U-H-N-A-U, who was J.S. Bach's immediate predecessor in Leipzig. He wrote a series of biblical sonatas um, music inspired by Bible stories, and the one we're featuring today is the one in which Saul was cured by David through the means of music. And we're going to play just the final section, which is inscribed with these words in German. After the refreshing music of David's harp, 
King Saul's mind was once more at peace. In other words, this was not the first time, and even in other, other words, David only had to show up and play his harp, and God did the healing. God did the rest. If you haven't played some of this music, it is available on a website called IMSLP. It's free for public domain music. You can download it and begin learning it today. Okay, one last look if you can see little Martin Luther over there. There's a lot to look at. Let's see if Coco gets on that airplane. I know she, she really will sit wherever she just wants to. Okay, oh, here's Raquel waiting on the bench. She's a raccoon, in case you didn't know. All right. I think I'm going to assign you the D sharp. That's yours. Anytime we get to it. a single D sharp. There are no D sharps. All right, hold your pause. All of them, what are you gonna do? There you go. Close your eyes. Let us pray. Ever present God, thank you for the words of St. Paul to the Galatians, assuring us that the Holy Spirit will always guide us as long as we just show up and listen. Thank you for Jesus, the true light and the true vine, who connects us all, those we know and those we have not met. As we show reverence for life and pray for all of your children and creatures, we give thanks that all of us are sisters and brothers, friends, as Jesus calls us friends. And we especially lift up those who live in Ghana and Nigeria, who you know each by name. We lift up all with any health issues, all who are caregivers and all who are transitioning from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. Thank you for giving us Jesus by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we too are promised that new life. As faith-filled people, keep us filled with your holy gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy. God, for all that has been, we say thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. And we say thanks and yes in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. And may God bless you today. Amen.